Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game to Comp video, we're going to be discussing two pieces of news. The primary one is Intel's core processors were going to be coming to an end with KB Lake, and indeed, there will be a new processor architecture coming out in about 2019 20. We'll get to that in a minute. And then we're going to be finishing things off with a very small thing regarding Vega. It is a teaser for 2017, thanks to AMD's own Twitter accounts. Now, the primary one, however, that we want to discuss is Intel. So it's fair to say that Intel have been pretty much stuck in a rut. We all know that they've had Sandy Bridge, Haswell, um, KB Lake, and of course I'm missing a couple of processors in that uh, lineup, but you get the idea. And basically there have been some improvements, definitely. For example, we saw Skylake, which switched the mainstream platform to DDR4, and obviously we have the... Uh, um, improvements to PCIe and a number of lanes and we've had NVMe support and all of those other bits and bobs but in terms of a massive architecture shift it just hasn't happened now Intel themselves are a pretty big player in the processor industry and so the fact that we've got this stagnation has led to obviously AMD trying to play catch-up which obviously is happening with the Ryzen uh, processors and so right now there has been a rumor which has popped up thanks to bitsandchips.it but this new upcoming architecture marks a monumental shift away from the legacy that they've built in fact if the rumor turns out to be true things might actually be very very different because the new x86 architecture might be very different from what we've seen so far now, it may be that the x86 is going to essentially miss out on some of the instructions slash some of the architecture that we've seen previously. And basically, they're going to cut down the backwards compatibility. Now, the reason behind this is pretty simple. Um, and I don't really want to go into a whole risk versus CISC thing because we're going to be here until Christmas uh, 2018. But... Obviously, reduced instruction sets come with the ability to utilize the silicon for other things. Now, as we start having a whole bunch of legacy stuff combined with the new generation of stuff, what you start doing is having a small amount of space for each core, for each processor core, that you can devote for either cache or, you know, things to actually process data. And then what you start needing to do is every generation, every successive generation as instructions become phased out, you start needing to be like, well, okay, well, I still need to put this particular instruction on there and this one and this one, and it becomes very um, taxing on manufacturing. Now, one of the big ones they're supposedly going to be removing is SIMD or SIMD. Now, one of the big ones, of course, is the old legacy SSE. Now, definitely Intel themselves can start emulating this because even if you have a legacy workload just for the sake of argument you have a processor instruction which dates back i'm just throwing numbers out here the sources hasn't given specific information but let's say you have an sse uh, variant which is from i don't know 2000 and let's just say early 2000s well even if you can't run it on concurrently with the latest technology it's not compatible that process that actual application is so old that emulation is probably not going to make much of a difference and so you might have to have a specific uh, OS perhaps a driver or something like that which is going to be able to do that emulation on the fly but it's not really a really big deal and what it will mean is at least in theory they can actually start to push that technology towards either larger amounts of cores, a more efficient uh, pipeline for the processor, perhaps more cache, whatever they want to do with it. At least in theory, this should mean that we should be able to have a x86 architecture which is leaner and meaner for the future because, after all, this is not going to be happening until after Tiger Lake. Now, Tiger Lake is expected to hit in 2019, so theoretically, we shouldn't start to see these processors hit retail until late 2019, or much more realistically, 2020-ish. So it's not like this is going to be happening tomorrow. And obviously, that also means, for those who are wondering, how is this going to impact AMD? Is it going to be a nasty thing for them? No, because by the time that they obviously 
release this processor, whatever it's going to be called. It's probably going to be called, I don't know, Cookie Lake, knowing Intel and their naming conv conventions recently with all their very interested in lakes. Um, so I'm just going to call it Cookie Lake for the remainder of this video, and I think everyone's going to appreciate that. So I'm assuming by the time Cookie Lake is released in 2020, we're either going to have Intel with, uh, sorry, AMD release their Zen Plus processor, or should I say Ryzen Plus processors, or perhaps even the successor to that. Regardless, it's a positive step in the right direction, at least in my opinion, and I am pretty happy that Intel are starting to move towards um, larger amounts of cores for their standard processors. I mean, obviously by the time 2020 roll, um, sorry, 2018 rolls around, we should start to see uh, the six core processor variants become normal in Intel's uh, lineup as well, which is definitely a positive. Now, I do want to point out this final thing, and that is AMD Vega, and it is pretty tiny. Twitter account, just to clarify, used to be known as AMD Radeon. So that's a pretty good sign that RX is going to be the name of their uh, GPUs for at least some time. Now, a very simple image has popped up. It is pretty much just an image of a dude or a dudette. It possibly could be Ruby because her the hair looks quite similar in terms of the, uh, the shortness and the colouring. But obviously, I'm guessing on that. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, so I'm going to assume it is Ruby, but um, for those of you who don't know, that used to be AMD's, uh, rather, ATI's mascot way back in the day. Usually for, um, they used to use it a lot for technical demos. But anyhow, uh, the image basically shows Ruby moving towards the light of this red, um, what looks to be like this, you know, fountain of energy. I'm going to assume it's a fountain of energy. Now, it's most likely this is going to be for CES 2017, because let's face it, what else could it be for? From what I understand, remember the whole Doom demo, which was leaked multiple times in various different areas? Uh, you know, we saw we saw some screenshots, and then pretty short shortly after the screenshots started to emerge, there were whole videos as well. Well, basically, that demo was supposedly not supposed to be publicly available until after New Hor um, until after CES 2017. So it would either be part of the teaser, or it would be something that they would broadcast or something else. So either way, it's not really a big deal, but I thought I'd just let you know because, well, it's kind of interesting if nothing else. And it does tell us that CES 2017 is probably the point that Vega is going to be shown off. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.